You wondering how to effectively use chicken wire in a floral arrangement? My friend, I've got you covered. Hello, my name is Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things marketing, money, and managing your mindset, specifically for floral designers on a mission to build a profitable business. And today, I wanted to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial, like a how to pass along a few tips and tricks. If you are making the transition away from flower foam and wanting to use chicken wire, or if you're just skipping the foam altogether and you're jumping right into learning how to use chicken wire. When I first got my qualification and I was first learning how to be a proper florist, I did everything with flower foam. I made archways with flower foam. I made table arrangements with flower foam. You name it. We went through so much flower foam in my shop. And then a few years ago, I started to make the transition away from flower foam and using more sustainable techniques. But my friend, <laughs> it was not pretty. I did not do it effortlessly. There was like a few temper tantrums that happened along the way. And I am really hoping that this step-by-step -step tutorial gives you a few tips and tricks, makes it even just like the teeniest bit easier than it was for me. Because if you have kind of grown up using flower foam, there are a few things to keep in mind if you're gonna stop using foam and start designing using chicken wire, because it's a different mechanic and it behaves differently. And in order for you to get the look that you want with your designs, it's worth sitting down and doing a couple intentional practice sessions, but just watch this video and take on board my couple of tips because it might really help you. Step number one, gather your materials. Now, I wanna show you exactly what you are going to need if you wanna follow my approach to going foam free. Obviously, you need a container, so that's a given. And then you want to also have your chicken wire. You, of course you can buy that fancy plastic coated chicken wire, but I don't have the patience for that. I just use chicken wire that I get at our local like building supply store. It's not fancy, <laughs> but it works. And then the other thing that I like to use, and this is like one of the things that really changed the game for me, is a frog. So you can buy these off of Amazon, you can buy these at your local sundries or hard goods dealer, you can buy them at a flower shop, I think you can buy them at a craft store, you can get them at a lot of places. And then you're also gonna want a product called Sure Stick. It's this weird green putty thing that actually hardens over time. Big word of warning, if you live in a really hot environment, i.e. Australia, if it gets over like 30, 35 degrees Celsius, it can kind of melt. Plus, I have no idea how it would behave if you're in like frozen tundra, Canadian <laughs> kind of environment. So just know that it works really well when you're in like normal human conditions, but if you're working in extreme heat or possibly extreme cold, who knows? So making sure you have your container, your chicken wire, your frog, your sure stick, I think that's everything. Once you've gathered all your materials, then we can jump onto step two. Okay, when it comes to prepping your container, the first tip is make sure that your actual container is dry, cause that way that your putty will actually adhere super quickly. So you're going to take your container and then you're going to take that little bit of sure stick and you're going to actually take it onto the back of the pin frog. I like to use a lot of sure stick. That way you're sure that it will stick. <laughs> Did you get that? You following along at home? Knee slapping, thanks dad. So I like to use quite a bit of this sure stick to make sure that it actually adheres to the container. But what you wanna do is put the sure stick on the back of the frog and then take the frog, push it down onto the container and then rotate it while pushing down in a clockwise, possibly even a counterclockwise direction. You'll feel it really kind of sticking and adhering to the bottom. It's magic because then it's stuck, which is so good. So you're not gonna have to worry about it moving around at the bottom of the container. And then when it comes to putting your chicken wire in, the best thing that I learned is to use layers of chicken wire. I got really frustrated when I only had like one layer of chicken wire or another layer of chicken wire, but instead you'll see that I kind of wrap it up in a little bit of a like sphere or like a ball or like an egg. And I try and actually make some of the chicken wire go into the center. So you have multiple places for the stems to actually like cut through the chicken wire and then they're gonna get caught and then they stay in the place and then you're happy. And that's what makes it amazing. 
So the thing I love about using chicken wire, so many things I love about using chicken wire, but one of the things, if, if you haven't put enough chicken wire in your container, you just add another layer on top. You don't need to go and pull the whole thing apart and like try and make another perfect sphere. No, your mechanics can look messy because once you put your flowers in there, it's really going to help make it just to look completely magical. But if you find yourself really struggling with getting your product to stay in place, add in the frog at the bottom of the container, but also remember to add in more layers of chicken wire. I find it so helpful and it made all the difference for me. And honestly, I probably use more chicken wire than your average floral designer, but it works for me. And it's the way that I got myself off of flower foam and using chicken wire in my table arrangements. And step number three is add water. Now I know it seems really obvious, but I'm also going to tell you to add more water than you think is necessary. Make sure that your flowers have plenty of water. And one of the biggest reasons that I moved away from flower foam and started using chicken wire is because we had so much more like clarity and transparency in terms of how much water our flowers needed. When you're doing weddings in Australia in spring, summer and fall, it gets really, really warm. So making sure that your flower foam doesn't ever dry out was something that just caused so much extra stress, so much extra activity, so much extra work for us. And it's one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest reasons I fell in love with moving away from flower foam was because all of a sudden you could see and you could feel, okay, how much water has evaporated from the container and or have the flowers actually consumed. You can take one of those little necked watering cans and then just tuck it into your flowers. And again, if you want it to be overflowing because you're making these a couple days ahead of time, even better. But I found it so much easier to be able to see how much water I needed to add into the containers and make sure that everything was gonna have a good drink and everything was gonna stay healthy such a less stressful experience for me than using flower foam because that just felt like such a totally unknown because the water would just evaporate so incredibly quickly. And after you've done all of this, then you just get to designing. My friend, this is one of those where I will tell you to practice. Finding the right combination of pin frog or flower frog and the amount of chicken wire that you wanna have in your containers is so personal, right? This is really like how we have to put that persona on in terms of like, this is how I like to prepare my vegetables in the kitchen. This is how I like to cut my vegetables in the kitchen. We're gonna do the same thing. Every designer gets to decide how much chicken wire they wanna use in their containers and just try different amounts and then you're gonna find your kind of happy medium. But the biggest thing and one of the biggest tips that I wish I had known at the beginning is use more chicken wire. It makes it way easier. And then this magic combination of a flower frog and layers of chicken wire, you're gonna be like, okay, no, I can do this. I just need to practice a couple more times and then I can totally make the look that I wanna make within my designs. I know that the transition away from flower foam towards using chicken wire can feel incredibly frustrating, particularly if you are anything like me and you've kind of relied on flower foam for many years and you're just really hesitant. You're kind of like, I don't know, I've tried it a couple times and it's like impossible. This is close to brain surgery. Do this, add in more layers, find a flower frog, play around and keep experimenting. I promise you it does get easier. This is absolutely one of those instances where the more you practice, the better you get. <laughs> So take some notes, reflect on it, talk about what went really well, think about something that you might do differently next time, and then make another time to intentionally practice. That's literally how I moved away from using flower foam was I allowed it to be messy, I allowed it to be crappy. I don't know why I didn't think about using more layers of chicken wire in the beginning, probably because I was convinced that there was a right way to use it. Oh no, my friend. <laughs> You get to decide how much chicken wire works for you to be able to create the look that you want to create. But I promise you, the move away from flower foam is so much easier once you start to put some of these principles in place. So if you go out there and you do an intentional practice session, please remember to take a picture of it and share it with me on Instagram. I absolutely love seeing where you guys are in the big, bad, beautiful world. And I love just seeing all the different flowers that are in season around the world world. As always, my friends, I hope that this training has been helpful. If you know anybody who could benefit from watching these four steps to 
chicken wire table arrangements, please send them this video. And don't forget, if you have not yet gotten in on my free course, The Three Secrets to Building a Thriving Flower Business, all you need to do is visit fourflorist.com backslash free course, enter your name and email address, and I will whiz it over to you by power of the internet tubes. Did I mention that it's free? Mm. It's a free course that teaches you about the business of flowers. You're welcome. But go in there, sign up today, and I will send it over to you. And as always, my love, have the most amazing day, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.